Let's read what the FDA wrote. Today, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved the first COVID-19 vaccine. The vaccine has been known as the Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine and will now be marketed as Comirnaty. Comirnaty, that's the new name for the prevention of COVID-19 disease in individuals 16 and older. I wanted to show you a study of the vaccine, a, a large phase one, two, three study sponsored by BioNTech and Pfizer. Uh, this study of 43,000 participants is not scheduled to end until May of 2023. Uh, official title of the study, a phase one, two, three placebo controlled randomized observer blind dose finding study to evaluate the safety, tolerability, immunogenicity, and efficacy of SARS-CoV-2 RNA vaccine candidates against COVID-19 in healthy individuals. So that study ends May 2nd, 2023. Never mind, says the FDA, we are going to approve this anyways. So the FDA says they feel quite confident that this uh, vaccine is 91% uh, effective against COVID. So let's get into what the FDA said. Uh, they had a small press conference on YouTube via audio only today. So let's listen to some of that press conference. The vaccine is clearly effective in, presenting, in preventing hospitalization and death, but may not always prevent infection, symptoms of transmission of the virus, uh, from person to person uh, either. All right, that is Peter Marks, the director for the Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research at the FDA. He was asked about the latest data that is showing a declining effectiveness of the vaccine against the Delta variant. There's various real world evidence that are emerging here um, that suggests that the vaccine um, is still effective against the Delta variant. Obviously, as, as you probably uh, are, are alluding to here, that uh, data coming out of Israel seems to suggest that with time, uh, immunity from uh, the vaccine does tend to wane. Uh, and so that's something we'll be following closely and obviously will be uh, leading into uh, consideration of uh, the thoughts regarding boosters, et cetera, as we move into the fall. Israel was one of the first nations to really push the vaccine on their population, got about 85% of their population vaccinated. So a lot of people in the world have been watching Israel to see how effective the vaccine is there. Uh, and it was, it was all Pfizer there. And the Pfizer vaccine showed an incredible decline in effectiveness. I got into that in my previous YouTube video, if you wanna check that out. But uh, yeah, not looking good in Israel. <laughs> and he talked a little bit about that. But also today the FDA got into risk factors. Myocarditis is still a prominent risk that they are talking about today and announcing that they've approved it. They, they're saying we've approved the vaccine, but Myocarditis could still happen. Myocarditis is inflammation around the heart, uh, which leads to scarring and then an enlarged heart. In some cases, death. In fact, I interviewed a dad whose son died of an enlarged heart days after taking the Pfizer shot. I'm working on editing that story now. Been having some editing issues as I move in transition, but going to get that story out very soon on my website, ivoryhecker.com. Take a listen to what the FDA said about uh, this myocarditis warning today. It's determined that the data demonstrates increased risk, particularly within seven days following the second dose. The observed risk is higher among males under 40 years of age compared to females and older males. The observed risk is highest in males aged 12 through 17 years of age, and available data from short-term follow-up suggests that most individual symptoms have now resolved. Uh, after the occurrence of uh, myocarditis. So the FDA today was pretty clear that they feel confident about this vaccine, but it is still being studied. This vaccine is still being studied. It is still very new, and there are things they genuinely don't know about. We'll continue to closely monitor the vaccine safety to ensure that any potential concerns uh, continue to be identified and evaluated in a timely manner.
the FDA is requiring the company to conduct post-marketing studies to further assess the risks of myocarditis and pericarditis following vaccination with community, including an evaluation of long-term outcomes. And one thing they still do not have a lot of answers on is what these vaccines do to pregnant women and the babies that they're carrying after that baby's born, they're going to be monitoring babies whose mothers have been vaccinated. Uh, additional post-marketing safety studies, including conducting a pregnancy registry to study and evaluate pregnancy and infant outcomes after vaccination during pregnancy. The FDA said that the free sharing of information is an issue to them. One of the biggest challenges that we still face in getting the public vaccinated and that's the overwhelming amount of information that's been circulating about COVID-19 vaccines. We've heard false claims that COVID-19 vaccines cause infertility, contain microchips, and cause COVID-19. And worse, we've heard false claims that thousands of people have died from the vaccine. Let me be clear, these claims are simply not true. I get that rumors form, but you're saying that it is not true that thousands of people have died after vaccination. The FDA literally just said that is not true. So why does VAERS have deaths after vaccination with COVID-19 vaccines? These are CDC certified VAERS reports. So thousands of people have not died after vaccination. Like I said, I just interviewed one of these people who lost his 16-year-old son. Perfectly healthy kid who died after getting the shot of an enlarged heart. And this man didn't even file a VAERS report. So who knows how many people are out there who didn't file VAERS reports who, who had tragic deaths like this. The large organizations may start implementing vaccine mandates now that the Pfizer vaccine has full FDA approval. CNN, pretty excited about the news today. But this full approval would give the cover to these organizations, universities, that they needed to actually impose a vaccine mandate. And that's what we're starting to see. They also strategize some ways to make the vaccine mandates enforceable across state lines. Is it, this is my proof of vaccination right here. It's a card. That's what I have. It's, it's handwritten. That's basically all it is. There is no federal database for this, this system. States are required to do it, but the states aren't talking to one another, ensuring vaccination status. That's probably going to have to be part of this, uh, this discussion as well, if we're going to mandate vaccines and require proof of vaccination. And finally, Jen Psaki says she does expect there will be more vaccine mandates now that Pfizer is FDA approved. I expect there will be more, sure, as we've said all along. Um, and I would note that my colleagues at the Department of Defense conveyed that they would move in the coming days to mandate the vaccine now that the approval has come from the FDA for Pfizer. So we certainly expect there will be more uh, mandates uh, for factions of federal employees. FDA approval of a brand new mRNA vaccine never done on humans was rushed through at a time when there is no permanent FDA commissioner. And someone brought that up today uh, to Press Secretary Jen Psaki. The qualified doctor in the country that the president could nominate for this post. I can assure you, I wish I had a nominee for the FDA commissioner standing behind that door so uh, that I could present them to all of you. And it is a very good question. All of this news today is really troubling to a lot of Americans who do not want to be vaccinated. Uh, CNN said that it was 82 million people in America so far who've not been vaccinated. And a lot of those people have not been vaccinated because they do not want to. So far, they have turned out every bribe to get vaccinated. They could have taken a lot of free things and they still haven't done it. They still haven't gotten the shot and they don't want to. And now they're scared they're gonna be forced to put something in their bodies that they didn't want in there. So what can you do about it? You know, no, CNN didn't address that at all. Nobody, in the mainstream is addressing what can people do who don't want a shot in their bodies. CNN were, today, they were just cheerleaders for mandates, cheerleaders for mandates. And a mandate is the forcing of something on someone who doesn't want that. How un-American is a mandate? So uh, 
I actually just talked to attorney Jared Woodfill, who he, he led that initial lawsuit, uh, which is now being taken up to a higher court uh, involving the Houston Methodist nurses. Uh, the rumors that that lawsuit is done with are not true. Uh, it's well underway. And I, I'm going to talk to him tomorrow, actually, and get some answers for you guys on, on what this new FDA approval means for people who are trying to uh, fight off any forced vaccinations. Okay, so I'm going to try to get some answers for you guys. Uh, he's not available till tomorrow. So uh, hang in there, and uh, I'm I'm all here. I'm here for individual liberty, unlike these other crazy, crazy, uh, mandate loving uh, corporate news people. Uh, it's something else. So I'm going to try to get some answers for you guys as soon as possible. But that's what that's that's uh, the news that happened today. I wanted to break it down for you. Have a good one.